How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, 10, 17 p.m. That's California time, January 30th, 2025, February just upon us here. Uh, latest activity shows a little 0.4 into the California region. Also some larger earthquake activity down south here into the Baja California region with a bunch of threes stirring up here in an earthquake swarm uh, just south of the border. So let's go ahead and see what's going on there real quick across California. Uh, now that's going to be out here across the Gulf of California region here. A, uh, just off the plate boundary. One earthquake showing up here from the USGS, but there's a number of earthquakes showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe here as noted. Quite a few threes stirring up. So that could potentially elevate activity there across Southern California here. Uh, in the hours ahead. One earthquake on the Malibu Fault, that uh, 1.3. That fault system has been quite active along with numerous other fault systems here in the last few months. So uh, we'll keep an eye on things out here. Not a whole lot of elevated activity there across Southern California for now, but things are uh, could be picking up. A uh, little bit of movement there on the Calaveras Fault uh, and the Hayward Fault conjunction it looks like uh, a little clustering going on with uh nothing big just a bunch of ones maybe even a two-pointer in that mix as well nothing major going on there across the hayward fault for now of course that's a uh, a pretty uh, significant fault system that uh, is capable of doing uh, quite a bit of damage there across the east bay region uh, one earthquake here uh, 1.3 and also a little uh, 1.6 here from last night. Nothing major going on there across the Bay Area for now, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, some movement there across Northern California. A couple twos, uh, three-pointer in there. The last One of the last quakes there across the plate boundary. Let's go ahead and check out uh, Trimmer map here tonight. See what we have for Cascadia Trimmer. Since we're on the Cascadia, which is, uh, yeah, sit, sitting down here, uh, southern end. 129 epicenters of trimmer. So things starting to stir back up out here across the southern end of the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Could be why we're seeing a little bit of larger earthquake activity out here today with the three-pointer. 129 epicenters of trimmer. Again, mostly across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Also one up here. Ooh. What do we got there? 1.4. 11 miles deep there, just north of Coos Bay, Oregon. Beautiful area, but also very dangerous uh, in terms of tsunami and earthquake potential there. There's a, uh, a lurking monster offshore called the Cascadia that, uh, well, it's in the future out here for those folks. Uh, let's see here. Inland, Nevada activity still kicking up as normal. Nothing going on there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, we'll double check that and make sure because we have, you know, we've seen a little bit of earthquake activity out here in the last couple days, uh, including that 3.7 that stirred up a little bit of swarming. But it looks like, uh, looks like there's another earthquake there. See that showing up on the graph here in the last couple hours. That uh, has got to be at least a, at least a 2.5. But as you can see. Nothing showing up there on the USGS ma uh, map here. And that includes all magnitude. So there's definitely a, a number of earthquakes here in the last couple hours, but it, apparently it's not enough to meet the threshold that the USGS uses here to, you know, before they put out a notification here on an earthquake. But it's legit earthquake activity. Nothing big, uh, but it's still some activity stirring up there across Yellowstone after a 3.7 uh, a day or so ago. Texas oil fields still getting hit with a lot of activity. A lot of people thinking this has to do with fault systems out here, but this has nothing to do with fault systems out in Texas. Uh, this has everything to do uh, with oil fields out here, and that's a no-brainer. <laughs> a no-brainer. Um, you know, the map says it, says it all out here. The oil boom in relation to the elevated activity and earthquake uh, activity is... Pretty much, you know, I, I wish I could draw it out in my mind, but it's uh, it's one in the same. New Madrid Seismic Zone, uh, nothing going on out there across the area for now. Got uh, pretty quiet out there across the eastern portion of the country. Check this out. USGS reporting 
uh, some earthquake activity here across Taupo Supervolcano. That's crazy for them to report a 1.9 and a 2.6. Uh, they, they almost hardly never report international earthquakes. So I would love to see them, you know, imp implement a function here to include uh, international earthquakes. Maybe that uh, that might might take make place or take place soon, hopefully. But either way, there's a little bit of earthquake activity here underneath the super volcano. It's a scary word, and it could be a scary thing if it does decide to pop out there. Uh, nothing big. I was looking at the volcano drums here across the top of the super volcano, and well, there's you know, un wrong wrong volcano right here. What? going on here you guys see that that's a little odd i go to click on the uh, taupo super volcano and it brings up this one every one i click on is something different you guys see that what's going on here someone having fun with my computer again tonight or what goodness it never ends it never ends and it's actually a federal fence there i'm going to be rich one day when uh, i catch whoever's doing it pinning they have some money uh but far as the taupo super volcano that's going to be this area right about here um there's a couple earthquakes in the vicinity of the taupo super volcano nothing big <laughs> oh man so if i go to click on that uh why is that right is that the right volcano maybe it is I guess it is, yeah, so, you know, that's my bad. That's this area right here. This is Rangit. I, I, I don't even want to slaughter that word. But, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of earthquake activity. Really nothing major going on there. I mean, if, you know, th this isn't even anything comparable to what they've seen last year. Was it last year or the year before when we had an elevated event out here? This is just very very minor activity there across uh taupo super volcano but uh, i'm surprised the usgs is reporting it we got there 1.5 in uh nevada area let's see what that is out there just coming in right now yeah across the area of uh the yarrington area of nevada this is where that five pointer struck here a few months back 5.7 or 5.6 somewhere around there Still seen some aftershock sequences out there, man. It's just been uh, non-stop, 200 aftershocks there in the last 30 days. As far as any major global activity goes, look at that. Uh, fairly quiet. In fact, the largest earthquake today, after midnight, is going to be this 4.6 here. Across the northern Mariana Trench area. 129 miles deep that's a pretty deep earthquake i got the hiccups all of a sudden that's just not good um that should amplify conditions out here across the western area of the uh, filipino plate nothing going on there across the nankai trough area for now but definitely uh keep that in mind still watching that got some potential there for some mega movement uh, look at that swarm down there across the Gulf of California. Aside from that, uh, you know, goodness, it's been kind of a, just a quiet day. Swarming going on there across the uh, Iran region, but really that's some older activity from this morning. Just kind of waiting. It seems like this is maybe the calm before the storm. I don't know. Some four, uh, 4 4.5 there across the Izu Trench. So that follows a deeper movement here across the uh, Mariana Trench. So again, this this whole area has been just nothing but earthquake activity here recently, elevated activity. And some of these regions here that are well built up, uh, for, as far as strain goes, uh, could be uh, hit pretty soon. All right, let's check out uh, space weather activity where we're currently seeing an M flare. Uh, a low-grade M flare, but an M flare nonetheless from sunspot uh, number looks like 3976 over here. 
That's that uh, large region that we've been watching come into the Earth directed view recently. Uh, you know, and it's still got uh, some complex areas out there as far as magnetic uh, structure goes. It looks like it's popping here within this area. Not seeing anything super dynamic that would that would tell me that we're going to see a major X flare here soon. It looks, you know, it looks like a mess here, which is normal. But uh, I'm not seeing anything of any uh, noteworthy value. You know, it looks like maybe a little bit of popcorn, different colors here popping up uh, within that center portion. So, and then that looks like that's where we're seeing that uh, M flare right now. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, over the next couple nights here, looks like we do have a potential here for some aurora activity. Really not expecting much from this. This is just from a um, a coronal hole that's been facing us here for a little while, number 11, number 12. And that's shooting out some high-speed solar wind stream, uh, but really not expecting much in terms of any elevated uh, aurora activity that they're calling a forecast up to a g1 class storm maybe i'm not really expecting that things are pretty quiet there across the board for now uh severe weather so what what took place out here today is check out the storm reports i know we're looking at maybe some tornado potential today but according to the uh storm prediction center there was no reports of any severe weather out there i guess that's good news right Considering the dynamics were there, but uh, it didn't take place. No major severe weather events now in the forecast uh, for now. There is that uh, rainmaker heading off to the east. We got uh, a storm system here approaching northern California. We got uh, a decent amount of precipitation coming in to hopefully squash the drought. Uh, Pretty steady band of moisture coming in as an atmospheric river event across Northern California. And this thing is aimed right at me, right here outside of Chico, California, just right across this area. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. It looks like that's going to be the pattern here for the uh, foreseeable future as far as wet weather goes. And uh, to me, that's okay. I love the rain. It, I, if it rained 24-7, 365 days a year, I probably wouldn't be happy. But we have temperatures around here in Northern California where it hits 115, 118 degrees in the summertime easily for days on end. So, you know, I appreciate the cooler, wetter months. And when they don't happen, I get a little, you know, grumpy. But it looks like things are coming back here. Uh, total accumulated precipitation runs show some modest, decent, actually some decent uh, precipitation um, out here across California. Bring it on. Bring on the rain. I'm ready. All right. Uh, what else we got here? A couple of earthquakes here. China Lake, one spike on Yellowstone. Really nothing major going on. This is just, it's eerily quiet. If you really think about it here for a daily chart or earthquake activity, it's eerily quiet. The, the areas I, I want to watch right now, obviously, uh, is across Southern California because just south here along the plate boundary, we got some elevated earthquake swarming going on in the uh, Gulf of California region. That should amplify conditions there across Southern California here overnight. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on things. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for the Friday morning update. Made it to the week, uh, almost to the weekend here. Take care.